Hello and thanks for joining me. Today I'm on the Rid Thee Path, which is one of the six main routes up Snowdon. Now I'm not actually planning to head up to the summit of Snowdon. The path splits about uh, half a mile up and one of the routes heads off towards Iraran and that's my target for today. Not necessarily to reach the summit, but I would like to get up to the col between Iraran and Snowdon, which gives me good views on the southern aspect of Snowdon and also down into Kung Clan and the Watkin Path. This is where me and the Ridhi path part ways. Uh, the Snowden path heads off that way, and I'm heading off that way up towards Iraran. One thing I've just discovered about this new Osmo Pocket that I've been using for filming in the last few vlogs, it's almost bulletproof. I've dropped it a couple of times already onto the stone path, and it seems to be completely unaffected. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, I can certainly vouch for how rugged they are, even though you wouldn't think they would be. Well, I'm about uh, half an hour in, about a mile up the track, uh, obviously pretty gentle pace. Uh, and I've started my photography for today uh, with a nice little lone hawthorn tree. What caught my eye about it, obviously, apart from the fact it's by itself, was that I was able to frame it between Agan and Manith Mauer on the far side of the valley. Um, no chance of getting the camera on a tripod and talking you through it though, because the camera had to be about two inches off the ground to get the separation between the tree and, and the backdrop. So you can see I was able to frame it so the trunk comes up through the valley um, and uh, get the top of it in the sky, hopefully, uh, but we'll see. Just listen to that. Absolutely nothing, apart from a bit of tinnitus, but then I'm getting on a bit. So I'm right at the very top uh, at a place called Bulchlan. Bulch is the Welsh word for mountain pass. So I'm on the col between Iraran over there and Snowdon Summit over there. Behind me, looking down the valley, is the Watkin Path. Way off in the distance is the, uh, the old derelict and the pine tree that Darren and I shot a few weeks ago. Um, when I was down there, I said to him I was heading up here. I don't think you believe me. Anyway, it's been a really nice walk up and I've spotted loads of compositions, but the first order of business is a pit stop, have some lunch, and then let's get some serious photography done. Okay, so lunch break over. Uh, I have to admit to you, I have taken a whole bunch of handheld shots just as the light was really changing. The sun's been out, gone back in, been out, back in. It's always like that in the mountains, so you just get what you're given. What I've got set up here, though, is quite an interesting shot, so I thought you might be interested to see what I'm doing with it. I've got a lovely stretch of rock here in the foreground uh, and then a leading line of the ridge, the south ridge of Snowdon, leading you all the way up to the summit. I've had light coming and going and bouncing off the different crags, creating depth in the image. So let me just talk you through how I set up for mountain photography. The key thing about this, it's about being ready to capture the light. 
the compositions kind of set themselves up to some degree because you're looking for angles and shapes, um, particularly diagonals. And then you're just waiting for the light to bounce off those diagonals or sit behind them, create the contrast that makes them pop out of the image. So I'm set at my sweet stop aperture of 5.6 and that's perfect because it's unlikely that any of these compositions as I'm walking down uh, are going to have anything particularly close up in the foreground. So I can leave it at 5.6 on aperture priority. I don't care about shutter speed. I've got no movement in the frame at all. As I say, this is just about being able to react to the light and capture those images as the light shows itself. So I'm just dialing in a little bit of exposure compensation here and there. I'm center weighted metering. Uh, that's all I need for this sort of thing. And then I can quickly react, dial in a bit of exposure compensation and fire off a few exposures. Give me something to work with back in post. So what I'm going to do with this, I've got about a three mile walk back down the mountain. I'm going to bring you along parked on top of my main camera like this. I'll show you what I'm looking at. As, as I take the images. The way I tend to work is this. When I'm walking up, I tend mostly, if I can, just to shoot on through. Um, uh, so so I'm, I'm hauling my way up with my walking poles. Much easier heading back down. So what I'm doing heading back down is I've got the camera on the tripod, you're on top of the camera, so that we can stop along the way because there's a good five or six compositions that I spotted on the way up that I've made a note of that I'm gonna get as we go back down. Now, the other thing that's really important in the afternoon as we head down, the sun is coming round. I'm hoping, even though it's behind some clouds at the moment, that it will illuminate the compositions that I've spotted, because it's going to be kind of shining on them. Uh, if it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, not a problem at all. I can always pop back up another time. Uh, give me a good excuse, not that I need one. Uh, but also, it, you just get what you're given. The thing about landscape photography, particularly in the mountains, is to make the most of what you've got. Have some fun with it. If you get the light, you get the light. If you don't, you don't. It doesn't matter one jot. So a couple more compositions along the way. Let's go and have a look. Now for this one, um, I've got a classic mountain composition going on here with some foreground, mid-ground and background. So to start within the foreground, I've got a little rocky outcrop and a lovely dry stone wall. Uh, then in the mid-ground, I've got twin mountain lakes and I'm looking down on them from an elevated position with some uh, old slate quarry workings. And then far across the valley, my main backdrop is the beautiful ridge of Agan on the one side and on the other, Manith Maur. And as you get your eyes taken down the Nantli Valley and some nice detail in the sky at the moment as well. I've lost the light, but there's some really nice cloud detail to make up for it. Uh, I'm shooting with a 0.9 soft grad. I'm at f5.6, as I mentioned earlier. Aperture priority. This shot, around about 17 to 20 millimeters, something like that. Nice and wide. No need for a panorama here because either sides of the main interest in the center of the frame, really nothing of any interest. It's, it's quite dull, so no need for a panorama. This little scene here has just caught my eye as I was heading down the path. There isn't a corner of Snowdonia that hasn't been impacted by slate quarrying or copper mining or some other form of heavy industry. During the Industrial Revolution, Snowdonia was an absolute hive of activity. You wouldn't credit it if you come up here now. It's just hill walkers and landscape photographers. But back in the day, this would have been absolutely packed with people working away and uh, having a very tough life. I really like this old derelict building, though. I like the way it's got some old timbers in it because very few of these buildings do have any timbers left. I love the way they really dress the stone beautifully. All of the lines and angles are absolutely spot on. They didn't need to. They were just simply building functional buildings. But that sense of pride comes through because even to this day, 150, 200 years later, you can still appreciate the workmanship. What I like about this particular scene is the way it's framed on the left by the uh, spoil heap and on the right by this uh, narrow gorge that I'm walking through and the path leads your eye down past the building across to the Nantla Ridge. So 
the overall composition really caught my eye and I stopped to uh, get the tripod set up. Now the word literally is used far too liberally by millennials and snowflakes with very little thought to its actual meaning. But when I first spotted what I'm about to show you, I literally gasped. This beautiful little waterfall that drops about 60 or 70 feet into this hole and the way it just cascades down the side, this beautiful veil of splashing water and the colors on the rocks at the bottom absolutely superb. I think I might take a photograph of this. So let me explain what I'm doing with this one. It's actually quite complicated. Not the sort of composition you'd want to particularly get, get too close to if you've got any sort of vertigo. So I'm right on the edge of a drop that's probably the thick end of 100 feet. Anyway, the way I've got this set up is there's a little rock right in the foreground. And I want that rock specifically in the bottom of my shot because that gives you the sense of depth of the hole that this waterfall is dropping into. Without that, I could simply be shooting it from a rock some way off. I want to get the sense of the fact it's, it's just dropping into a, a hole. Now, I've been waiting for some light. Might have a long wait by the looks of it, but that doesn't matter. I'm not in any rush at all. And this is rather special, so um, I'll wait it out as long as I need to. In the meantime, let me just tell you what I'm up to in terms of my camera settings. Now, I mentioned that rock in the foreground that I really want to have in the shot so that I can demonstrate the depth in it. That rock needs to be in sharp focus though, so this is going to be a focus stack. And what I've done is I've taken a shot of the rock, focusing on it nice and sharp, that's perfect. So. That's in the can and I can blend that in with whatever I get for the rest of the composition, which frankly will be the other at least 90% of the image. Obviously the uh, floor of the hole is about 100, 120 feet away from the camera. So focusing the, the rest of the image is relatively straightforward and I'm focused on the pool at the bottom of the waterfall. So the settings that I'm using for the shot, very straightforward. Um, I've got an aperture dialed in of f10. That's giving me at ISO 200 a shutter speed of a quarter of a second. That's exactly what I want for this particular sort of composition. It's going to smooth the water a little, but still leave plenty of detail in there. I don't want it just to be a solid white blur. It also means that where the water is just bouncing off the sides, I might get some little flecks of movement going left and right from the main uh, stream of water. But I really want some light because earlier on when I walked up and spotted this composition, I thought, oh, it'll be great when the sun's moved around a little bit and it's shining straight in there because the reds and oranges of the uh, staining on the rocks would look fabulous. It's a bit flat at the moment, unfortunately, but it's still a beautiful composition. I just wish I had some light. I really can't wait it out. Um, I've been here for quite a while now. Yeah, I think I'm sticking with what I've got for this one, but I'm definitely going to come back. I have it in mind to come back in the summer and wild camp somewhere up near the summit of Eraran. And maybe I'll pick it up then. Well, how about this for a classic Snowdonia mountain scene? This beautiful little cascade as it runs down. I'm getting down towards the bottom of the mountain now, so as the little streams tend to merge together, you get slightly bigger runs like this. Makes it a bit more interesting from a photographic standpoint. Composition is very, very classic. Um, the cascade running off down into the bottom right-hand corner, but I've also managed to get the summit of Araran in the composition as well at 12 millimeters. 
I'm shooting it at uh, f6.3, which is giving me a tenth of a second. Absolutely perfect for this kind of moving water. Now I'm back down at where the two paths join up again, not far from the car park, and I just thought I'd get a final image from this vantage point. I was going to use the word panorama, but it's not a photographic panorama, it's just a, a wide vista of, uh, from left to right, Agan, Munith Maur, uh, Llinquechlin, and then uh, Moilelio sitting there above Betus Garman. It's a lovely view. The light's gone, a cold breeze has got up, but I still wanted to grab this image. Very simple. I've used the path as a bit of a leading line, but it kind of bends out of the image rather than into it. Not much I can do about that. So I think I'm going to leave it there for this one. I've had an absolutely fabulous day out and I really hope that I can convey how much I love this part of the world. Um, I really enjoy doing my off the beaten tracks and my park and shoots, but my favourite are always the big, long, high hikes in the mountains. By far and away, my favourite kind of photography and day out. Anyway, thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I always appreciate your company and your support. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now? Join me next time. Cheers.